What's up everyone, Dcrack here, about to react to another video for you guys, and this is a brand new Mr. Nightmare video, I know you guys love these Mr. Nightmare videos, the scary stuff, this has three scary, allegedly real horror stories by Mr. Nightmare, I'll have a link to the original video down below, so make sure and go check out some of his other videos, but let's go guys. These aren't scary at all, are they? <laughs> this happened to my parents back in the late 80s. They were in their mid-20s when this all occurred. My parents decided to go camping in cool California. When they got there, it was kind of late. My mom was sitting down on a lot There's while a my dad was unpacking cool. the truck. <laughs> while sitting down, she heard walking around the campsite, so she went and quietly told my dad she heard something walking around. They got the hell out of there just in case. They drove about three miles down the road with their headlights off so they wouldn't be followed. Once they got there, they set up camp and they began to drink their asses off while listening to a boxing match on the radio. Eventually, they settled in for the night. Now they don't know for sure that this next event is connected to the first, but they believe it is. So they settled in, and my dad was asleep far before my mom. My mom was in the halfway She's state paranoid. where you're half awake and half asleep. Suddenly, she heard footsteps outside the tents. She abruptly snapped back to consciousness and listened. Yo. She tried waking my dad, but he was way too out of it. She listened for what seemed like hours, when suddenly, she heard the words, Here I am, I'm going to kill you from outside the tents. While saying this, the man ran what she believes to be a knife along the tents. She could hear him walking and dragging the knife. Uh. She was literally frozen. She couldn't say anything or move. With her mouth agape, she finally snapped out of it and screamed, Jim, grab the shotgun and kill that son of a bitch. With that, my dad finally awoke. They heard snapping of twigs and footsteps and heard the guy running away. Of course, my parents didn't have a shotgun. Ah. It was a bluff that actually worked. Ah, the guy ran my off. My dad got up seconds later and began to run after him, but he was long gone. After that, my parents decided they were getting the fuck out of there before anything else happened. Well, yeah! When they got to their truck, they found out that their tires had been slashed. They were in the middle of nowhere and had no way out with some maniac that wanted to kill them nearby. What? They actually tried blowing up the tires with one of those things you use to blow up rafts. Obviously that didn't work, but they had to try, right? About an hour or so later, a ranger that was patrolling the area came along and helped them out. He brought them back to town so they could get their tires fixed. Man! While talking to the ranger, they found out that he had been searching for any suspicious activity due to recent murders nearby. My parents were likely the murderer's next victims. Re he he murdered other people? I tried to find some of the murder people? cases online, oh, hell but was no. unable to. So that was a legit murderer, like serial killer? Hell no. I began babysitting at 13 to earn some extra money to spend horribly on embarrassing things like Fallout Boy's CDs. <laughs> I would almost always work for my dad's clients and get referred by word of mouth. I was babysitting for this one family who had a little girl, nine, and a little boy, seven. The parents seemed okay, if a tad crotchety and awkward, giving me a full schedule to follow and jokingly threatening to beat any boy who might mysteriously show up after they left. It felt cruel for them to accuse me of knowing a boy, given I basically looked like an overgrown baby with frizzly hair at that age. Almost immediately after the parents had left, the little girl started singing the words, We're all alone, in a creepy high-pitched voice. I know, the little boy chimed in. Let's play rape. Looking back now, I know the kid probably just heard the term what? on TV, knew the word was shocking, and said it just for a reaction. I totally bought into it at the time, sputtering wide-eyed and changing the subject quickly. Let's play These Ray! These kids were hell for the next hour. I wouldn't let them watch South Park on the TV because their parents did not seem like the type to allow their precious seven and nine-year-old to watch a show like that. As soon as I said no, the little girl said casually, Oh, that's fine. We'll just go play PlayStation in the family room. Feel free to watch it out here. But I knew exactly where that was headed. I said they could watch any other TV show in the living room while I made them dinner. 
The parents had left instructions to make them sandwiches. I could handle that. Before I even got out the bread, I heard a massive crash. It seemed like the little girl had broken a glass. Tutting and pissed, but ultimately with no way to punish her, I cleaned it up while these two incredibly weird kids watched with wide eyes. Dumping the broken glass into the trash, what? I went back to making the sandwiches. I am a vegetarian, so while the kids had chicken, I made a simple salad one for myself. Just as I was finishing, the little boy screamed out in what sounded like an exaggerated scream of pain. Nonetheless, I ran over to the couch in the living room to check on him. But my ankle, he howled kind of dramatically, flopping back into the couch. By the way he yelled it, I could tell he was a horrible actor. While I tried to figure out how he had allegedly hurt his ankle, the little girl slipped out of the room. Peripherally, I was aware of this, but didn't really pay it any mind. I was focused on this little boy pretending to be in pain. He kept saying, I went, I went to stand but it hurt too much, I, I don't know. He kept saying this over and over until his eyes suddenly flicked to That's just weird. behind me where I could see the little girl standing with a perturbing smile on her face. And just like that, he was miraculously healed. At this point, I was just thinking these kids were really weird, craved attention a little too much, and probably needed more parental involvement. Whatever, I was 13 and that $60 was only Jeez. 4 hours away. I set out the sandwiches for the two to eat at the dining ah. table. Then I went to get us all soda and returned. After pouring soda for both of them, I realized they hadn't even taken a bite of their sandwiches yet. I asked them what they were waiting for. Then they smiled. For you to take a bite of yours? For some reason, I felt like my heart dropped after she said this, and I'm so glad I had the gut feeling to open the top part of the sandwich, because when I did, I saw glass. Broken glass. Broken glass that I'd put in the trash. I stared in horror at the two kids staring at me with menacing grins. I lost it, shouting at them, what? explaining they could have Yo. easily injured my mouth. What's wrong with you two? Instead of crying or apologizing or pretending to be ashamed or confused, these two little fuckers began laughing. Not like kids, it was too low. These kids it wasn't are that evil. Silly, typical what the kids hell? laugh. It was low and threatening. I'll never forget that noise. My immediate reaction was, these kids are, are too young are to be possessed? laughing like that. I called my older sister, cried about what happened, and she came and stayed there with me. We left the house with chills after the parents arrived. I never babysat for those two again. What I can't get past is the level of premeditation that went into sprinkling that broken glass into my sandwich and the totally remorseless way they responded to my getting upset. Yeah, the little they boy faking his ankle and then the before. girl... Those kids are going to grow up to be freaking psychopaths and serial this killers. This happened three years ago, Jeez. August 2013 at the time I'm writing this. I'm 25 years old, and a few years ago, me and four of my buddies who are all the same age as me were on our way to New Hampshire for a vacation, or a one-week trip rather, to a small getaway home that my buddy Johnny owns. It's in a very rural area, which is ideal for hunting, skiing, off-roading, paintballing, and overall just having a nice rural escape from the city. Why in New Hampshire, you may ask? Well, apparently his grandparents owned the land as their own little vacation spot before they passed. And he didn't want to sell it. This was the first time he'd be going up there for a whole year. We had a late start to the day, so we left Massachusetts around 3 o'clock. And after making a bunch of stops on the way there, we were finally just about there at about 7.30. It was starting to get I'm dark all paranoid now, and the isolated now. country roads were a bit spooky at this hour. We pulled onto the property off the dirt road, Hell and yeah, they slammed are. the brakes and said, Oh my god. We all looked at the home and saw the front door was open, and Maddie, one of my other buddies, pointed out the flashlight shining around inside the home that we could see through the window. Dude, we gotta get the fuck out of here, I told him. Johnny did something that surprised all of us next. He stepped on the gas, approached the home, and laid on the horn for a good ten seconds. The lights coming from inside the home went dark, and there was now nothing but a dark, unlit home with the front door open in front of us. Johnny was like, alright, let's go, as he aggressively left the car, ready to confront whoever was in there. We all followed behind. 
Johnny ran up the front porch, stormed into the home, flashlight in hand, and started yelling oh, like a maniac. Oh, hell no! My heart was racing as I entered the home. Johnny told Maddie to run down to the basement with him, while me and the two others scouted the main floor. We all used our phones as flashlights. The electricity wasn't turned on yet, of course. Alec checked the kitchen, Amir checked a small bedroom and bathroom, while I checked a master bedroom down by the end of the home. It was seemingly empty, but I was afraid to check any of the closets. I reached out my hand closer to the doorknob of one of the sliding closets, but that's when I heard Maddie and Johnny this screaming from the as basement. Hell. At the same time, the closet door in front of me pulled open with force and somebody emerged quickly, grabbing me and locking me in a hold. Before both of my friends ran downstairs, I what? got their attention by yelling and they came to my aid. They both pulled the guy off of me and he ran out of the house. We all ran downstairs expecting to find more intruders, but found something much more disturbing. Not only were we greeted to a putrid smell, but we were also immediately greeted to the gruesome sight of two dead bodies, not just clean, unwounded corpses, no. Oh. These were bloody, missing limbs, blood was splattered on the concrete floor. It was the most disturbing thing, no oh. doubt, I have ever oh. seen. We all ran as fast as possible out the house in an effort to find the man who attacked me. So that killer was possible. cutting up bodies Forests in the- surrounded oh. the house, and it would be pointless. The sheriff's department came to investigate. It became a huge scene with police lines, people taking pictures and fingerprints and everything. The two victims were identified as Indian barbershop workers. The cause for the murders is, as far as I know, unknown. I would refer you to Johnny for more information, but I'm not going to invade his privacy and leak his information to strangers like that. When we went home, we didn't speak to each other for about a week. We were all emotionally scarred in a sense, at least for a while. Now, it's nothing more than a story to tell. Well, all right, guys, that's the that was a new Mr. Nightmare video. Those were some creepy stories. That that last one, there was bodies in the basement that were decomposing and had limbs cut off and blood everywhere. So, ugh. That first one where the parents went camping and the guy said, I'm going to kill you, and they heard like a knife on the tent. And then they figured out later from the police that the guy had actually killed. Like, he wasn't just joking around like a prank. Like, he actually murdered other people. Like, oh, geez. That shit's messed up. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure and smack the like button and subscribe if you're new. Make sure and follow me on Twitter. I'll have a link in the description. And if you have a certain video you want me to react to, just comment down below. Maybe I'll check it out and do it for one of my next reactions. But, yeah, until next time, guys, peace.